Welcome Ashwin to our Careers in Finance podcast where we essentially want all the young people out there who are looking for a career in financial services to understand the various kind of roles across functions. So of course with you being a specialist and the CTO at Incred we would love for you to first of all you know maybe kick off by telling us what are some of the best entry points for someone who wants a career in tech in finance and uh, is it better to start with coding or product or you know some other area what would be your recommendation we look for kind of two things one is functional skills testing of some concepts and then in terms of behavioral skills we emphasize that a lot we are lo- really looking for especially at the entry level freshers or some lateral hires with let's say 0 to 2 years of experience mm-hmm. we are looking for three things one intellectual curiosity the desire to learn and second is grit there will never be perfect conditions we want some evidence of did you stick with it or did you give up at the first sign of trouble in any project you worked on whether in college or whether at your previous job and third is openness to feedback are you willing to treat feedback as a gift and work on it to get continuously better so as long as your slope is positive we can achieve whatever we want so i wouldn't say there is any specific preference as to product or engineering it's mm. about what you want and you should think that through these are the things which we are looking for some functional skills depending on wherever you apply and then fantastic sort of curiosity or do you like have actual like do you administer some tests to freshers when they want to take up a job at incred like uh, some tech oriented or any kind of okay. yes yes so there are some first screening filters and then whether you are able to demonstrate mastery or comfort with basic concepts and then you progress into something called a interview loop mm-hmm. and where everyone everyone assigned to that interview loop is evaluating you on different dimensions okay some one could be evaluating you on functional dimensions functional skill sets and uh, one to two to three more rounds depending on the seniority levels or or even four evaluating you for behavioral competencies mm-hmm. uh, and whether you would fit into our culture and then the other signal which we rely on heavily and which we've learned matters a lot is references if you have a demonstrated track record at a previous workplace that's the strongest signal that we can get and whether just asking your references or your previous manager and what they speak about you speaks a lot about whether you're likely to succeed at incred or not so those are the signals we look at um do you think some amount of you know knowledge of um, financial services or you know some um, maybe an elective in finance etc would kind of put someone um, an engineer in a better place to take up a job in a fintech it might help but i don't think it's a big as a tangible but one thing does help is what we call ubiquitous language can you speak the language of your customers uh-huh. can you speak the language of your business stakeholders if you're able to do that you're better able to ingest their problems and then suggest the right solution so just the desire to learn if you if you have that i think all these things can be picked up very quickly okay. yes okay uh, what roles in tech would you say are great for non coders let me put it this way uh, what we are looking for are people with a desire to build who want to invent and uh, if you have that desire to invent stuff and work at the cutting edge and uh, solve problems for customers and for the business that moves the needle materially we are very happy to talk to you what should young professionals really prepare for in an ai driven world i think uh, we also did a hackathon recently like what's been the experience like yeah i mean i think embrace new technology curves whenever there is a technological leap we should not bury our heads in the sand rather embrace it play with it see how you can incorporate it into your daily life into your muscle memory and see what you can do with it and uh, use cases you will learn use cases for yourself 
and you will then be innovating along with the emerging technology so that's what i would advise continuous learning and continuous improvement i think um what kind of career growth can a person see in tech uh, from the time say someone who has joined in cred um you know and started as a fresher what kind of career path do they have for themselves no that's a great question um i think about career growth in two dimensions scope and impact one must always deliver impact mm. and then you're ready to take on more scope um so and and in tech we have kind of dual career paths one is who then goes down the management path where you always are a builder but you also start managing people and delivering building stuff through them or you can stay on the deep technology path of building and maintaining and architecting our systems and being part of a pod which which does that there you remain an individual individual contributor as opposed to becoming a player and manager so that's one differentiation the other thing i would say is kind of when you join at the junior most level you are an implementer someone is telling you do this and then you want to develop a track record of implementing things well next level is you become a problem solver who is able to figure out the path how to implement it to solve a problem and third kind of i guess at my level and one level below me you are funders of problems you are deciding what problems are worth solving and what problems aren't working closely with the business so i hope that kind of gives that, you a high yeah, level i think that's beautifully uh, said the context is amazing so ashwin one last question for the careers uh, episode um for technology and engineers uh, tech workers today when they come out of uh, their schools um obviously there are so many jobs in tech and engineering across industries and sectors right why should someone pick fintech as um their chosen path no i think that's a very interesting question uh i think people should reflect and introspect on what is it that they want to achieve and then maybe initially dabble a little bit to figure out whether they're in the right path or not but in terms of fintech i think they i can think of two good reasons one the ability to uh drive impact at scale and bring about change in the life of customers especially a country like india which is credit starved and uh, there's still a long way to go in terms of using credit to help india and indians grow so i think that's a fun mission to be part of second i would say um someone had this great line um in terms of career choices the industry you work is more important than the product you work on which is more important than how hard you work i think in finance those are profit pools that are always available there is always going to be need for credit uh, so if you are thinking about oh in in a world that is becoming increasingly uncertain i think it's a good profession to be in where there is the demand for more building more things is never going to go away i find it very hard to believe a world where there is no there is no finance and and empowered by technology does it make sense absolutely i think um, you know even in our wealth podcast we discuss it right? the if the country keeps growing at a certain pace then financial services is going to keep pace with that same level of gdp growth so i think in that sense financial services remains you know a, a great industry to be a part of and participate in actually the growth of the economy as well so very well put thank you ashwin so much for joining us thank you thanks for having me radhika i really enjoyed it perfect thank you